Next we'll formulate a scheduling problem as a linear program. Consider the situation where we have a hospital that aims to design a schedule for day shift nurses that minimizes the total number of nurses employed. Each nurse works three consecutive day shifts and then has four days off. This is a standard schedule in this hospital. So, for example, if you start your shift on Monday, then you work on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday off. And this table here provides the minimum number of nurses required for each day of the week. On Monday you need at least 16 nurses, on Tuesday at least 12, and so on. In addition, there is one more scheduling requirement saying that at least half of the nurses must have weekends off. And having weekends off means that they have both Saturday and Sunday off. All right. As always, we start formulating a model by thinking about what would be the suitable decision variables. When you look at the data, perhaps the initial thought that comes to many is that we should define the variables for the different days of the week, like x1 from Monday, x2 for Tuesday, and so on. So the ith decision variable xi would be the number of nurses that work during the ith day of the week, right? So this is for i between 1 and 7. So let's see where this choice of decision variables will lead us. So first of all, we need to minimize the total number of nurses. What would the objective function be? minimize the summation of xi's for i between 1 and 7. Would this be a correct objective here? So let's think about it. When we sum up all the variables like this, say if x1 were the nurses that work on Monday, then uh, this number would actually include the nurses that have different shifts. Because a typical shift consists of three consecutive days, right? So the nurses that start their shift on Monday also work on Tuesday and Wednesday, right? So the same nurses will be counted in X1, X2 and X3. So this definition of the objective function would be incorrect right? And it looks like this definition of decision variables leads us nowhere. Do you know what that means, professor? It means you don't get the unicorn! Oh! So it looks like we need to rethink our definition of the decision variables here. And actually looking at how the newer schedules are structured, you have three consecutive day shifts and then four consecutive shifts off. It makes sense to associate the decision variables with the different types of schedules rather than days of the week. So as x1 we could define the number of nurses that start on Monday. Similarly x2 would be the number of nurses that start on Tuesday and so on. Then we don't have the overlap issue and the total number of nurses that we need to hire will be given by the summation of xi's now for i between 1 and 7 and this is what we want to minimize, right? And to satisfy the requirement constraints, the nurses that work on Monday, they come from the x1 schedule, so this would be the nurses that start working on Monday but also the nurses that start on Saturday and Sunday also work on Monday. So the total number of nurses that work on Monday will be X1 plus X6 plus X7. All right, so that total number needs to be at least 16. So similarly for Tuesday, we will have the nurses from the schedule that starts on Monday, the nurses from the schedule that starts on Tuesday, as well as the nurses that start on Sunday. So we'll have 
x1 plus x2 plus x7 must be greater or equal to 12 and so on then the rest of the model is very easy to write down so you write similar constraints for each day of the week and then of course we'll have non-negativity so we define now our variables like this x1 is the number of nurses working monday tuesday wednesday schedule and so on our objective function is just a summation of all the variables xi's and we want to minimize and we address the constraints for the number of nurses, the minimum requirements that we need to have for every day of the week by summing up the respective three variables for each day of the week that take into account the nurses that work on that day. All right, so the only remaining constraint that we need to address is to ensure that more than half of the nurses do not work during the weekend. All right, so how do we do that? So we need to distinguish between the nurses that work during the weekend and nurses that don't work during the weekend. And the total number of nurses that don't work during the weekend divided by the total number of nurses overall must be at least one half, right? So let's see which schedules don't include the weekends. If we look at the definition of our decision variables, this schedule doesn't include the weekends. This doesn't, this doesn't, and actually the remaining four schedules do include at least one of the weekend days, right? So the total number of nurses that don't work during the weekend will be given by X1 plus X2 plus X3. And this divided by the total number of nurses, which is the summation of all xi's, must be greater or equal to one half. And we obtain what looks like a nonlinear constraints here. So we have a fraction, right? So what do we do to formulate a linear program? So when you have a constraint of this sort, since the denominator must be positive, we can multiply both sides of this inequality by the denominator and as a result we'll obtain a linear inequality, right? So this inequality will be x1 plus x2 plus x3 multiplied by 2 is greater or equal to the summation of all the xi's and this inequality will actually be equivalent to saying that x1 plus x2 plus x3 is greater or equal to x4 plus x5 plus x6 plus x7 which is something that we could have written to start with without even looking at this fraction because what this says here is that there are at least as many nurses that don't work during the weekend as there are of those who do work during the weekend, right? But uh, writing this in the fractional form first makes it more general because what if I told you three quarters instead of one half, right? So then you would have to put three quarters here and this approach works in that case as well. So we have the advantage of generality when we write things as a fraction first and then transform into a linear inequality. All right, so this is a very common trick. We will discuss it also in the blending models or mixing models that we'll talk about later. So in summary, this is the model that we obtain. So we have this problem with a constraint for every day of the week plus we also have a constraint ensuring that not too many nurses work during the weekends all right so and then if we feed it to a solver we find that the optimal objective value is given by 31 and one of the optimal solutions is given here so first let's look at how efficient this schedule is by checking what happens to the constraints when we plug in these numbers so if I plug in x1 equal to 11, then x6 is equal to 4, and x7 is 1, then we obtain exactly 16 
for the left hand side of this constraint let me write it here so there is no redundancy here right so we have exactly as many nurses as we need for this day then for tuesday you have x1 plus x2 plus x7 x1 plus x2 plus x7 gives us exactly 12 so again we see that uh, so far there is no redundancy then for the third day of the week we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 and in this case we actually have 21 so 21 we have three extra nurses so during the midweek we have some redundancy right so we have some extra workforce in case we need it then uh, x2 plus x3 plus x4 gives us 13 exactly the right hand side here so we have no excess then for first day x3 x4 and x5 give us 15 no excess right then x4 5 6 3 plus 2 plus 4 is 9 right so then x5 plus x6 plus x7 is uh, 7 all right so the only day of the week when we have some redundancy in the system is wednesday so this is a very efficient schedule on the downside of course the only day that nurses can relax for a little bit would be wednesday right so but then looking at the weekend constraint here we can see that if we sum up x1 x2 and x3 this will give us the total number of nurses that don't work during the weekend and this gives us 21 right so out of 31 nurses 21 don't work during the weekend and only 10 work that's way above the target of having half of the nurses not to work during the weekend which is great right